A question I get asked a lot is what batteries I use with my FPV drones and why. So in this tutorial I'll share the basics that you need to know about FPV batteries. So what do these numbers mean, how to safely store them, how to charge or discharge them and so on. Because a LiPo battery is no joke, this thing burns like hell. Houses and cars have burned down already, so please pay attention and watch the whole tutorial, especially if you are new to FPV. LiPo batteries are not the most exciting topic to talk about, but it is essential that you have this knowledge to stay safe. The batteries I use are from Jens Ace. I've never used other batteries because I love flying with this, they produce a lot of power and they've never let me down. So let's go over how you can figure out what battery is best for you. And to do that, what you need to know is what are these numbers? Like, what do they mean? It might look complicated in the beginning, but it really isn't. And I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible. All the FPV gear and batteries will also be listed below this video, so make sure to check it out. When buying a new battery for your drone, first thing you need to know of is the voltage of the battery. So what is the number of cells your battery needs to have? So here it says 6S, meaning this drone is powered with a LiPo battery that has 6 cells. And this is the same drone but it's a 4S version, meaning it needs a battery that has 4 cells. So be careful because if flying with a wrong version you might end up damaging your drone components. You can fly your drone with a battery that has less cells than the drone is made for, in that case the drone would simply have less power, but if you attach a battery with more cells that your drone is made for, then <laughs> your components can literally get on fire. Long story short, make sure to buy the right batteries. Next number we have to look at is the capacity. The capacity of the battery is basically the measure of how much power the battery can hold. It's like a fuel tank of a plane or a car that's limited with how much gas it can hold. Well, same is here, battery is limited with how many milliampere hours it can hold. The higher the number, the more juice the battery has and the longer your flight time will be. But at the same time, you need to keep in mind that the more milliampere hours your battery has, the bigger it is. The size of the battery increases, for example, this is a 4000 mAh battery, but it's too big and too heavy to fly it on a 5 inch quad, but perfect for a 7 inch quad, for example. And the 1400 mAh 6S battery is perfect for a 5 inch quad, but too big for this little guy, for example. 1050 mAh is perfect for this one. Sellers usually give you the recommendations about what are the best batteries to get for their pre-built drones, so make sure to always read the description when buying a drone. Next number we need to talk about is the discharge rating, C rating. This number tells you how much current you can safely use for flying your drone without degrading the battery. Long story short, all the intensive FPV drone maneuvers and pushing the throttle really puts the battery under stress, so I highly recommend that for longevity, you choose a high C rating battery, and I recommend at least 100 C. So I have two very similar batteries here from Jens Ace, 6S Statue Funfly 1300 mAh, which is their budget line, and 6S Statue Airline 1400 mAh, which is their premium line. Both great batteries, been using them for a while now with no problem. Funfly has 100C and Airline has 130C. And yes, I do feel that flying with Airline gives you a little more punch, not a huge difference, but it's there. So let's talk voltage now. So together, all six cells in this battery have 22.2 volts at storage charge. When you're flying FPV, this number basically tells you how intensively you're pushing your battery. When you're just cruising around, your voltage is high, but when you punch your throttle, the voltage temporarily rock bottoms. So when flying, you always need to keep checking your voltage, especially towards the end of your flights. You don't want to punch your throttle with low voltage because your battery might not be able to handle it and you will, well, fall down from the sky. If the voltage is too low, the battery loses its strength and cannot output enough power. I prefer to watch voltage per cell instead of the full battery, just a personal preference. Generally, when flying, you want to land at 3.6 uh, voltage per cell to keep your battery safe and healthy. But if it does happen for whatever reason that you can't land at 3.6 and you land at 3.3 voltage, for example, just charge the battery up to storage voltage as soon as possible. And if you're not planning to fly for a few days or weeks, always store your batteries at around 3.7, 3.8 voltage per cell and store them in a lipo safe bag again please store them in a lipo safe bag and i also got this old ammunition box so it's it's double safe i guess i'm not really sure if this is fireproof but i think it is Last thing we need to talk about is how to safely charge your batteries. If you don't follow these guidelines, you can reduce the battery's life significantly. So let's say you just want to charge a single battery at a time, 
plug in your charger, then plug in your XT60 connector and your balance cable. Make sure you turn them the right way or you will burn them. Trust me, I made the mistake and if this happens, you will well need to replace the components. So once you plug in everything correctly, you should see a reading of the voltage of your battery here. My charger automatically detects that it's a 6S battery and the individual cell voltage should be charged to 4.2 volts. Never charge over 4.2 volts. Make sure to always double check this setting. So all I need to do now is to set how quickly do I want to charge my battery. The safest way to charge it is at 1C, meaning at uh, the one times the capacity. So if this is 1400 mAh battery, I can charge it with 1C speed, which is 1.4 amperes. So if I'm charging the battery at home because I'm fly planning to fly later that day, I have the time, I will charge it with 1C. It is the safest way, but it's a slow process, which will take you around 35 to 45 minutes, depending uh, how empty the battery was. But if I'm out on terrain, you know, I'm flying on a project and I need my battery charged as fast as possible on terrain, I will charge it with 3 or 4C. So for 1400 mAh battery, that means between 4.2 to 5.6 amperes per battery. But if you charge it so fast, make sure to really go fly it immediately after. I'm not an expert for LiPo batteries, but they say that charging with higher speed is dangerous and only do it when really needed not only because of the safety reasons, but it also degrades your battery life, so they say. So for longevity, charge with 1C and use a parallel board to charge multiple batteries together at the same time. With a board like this, you can charge up to six batteries at the same time, but a very important thing to know is that batteries need to have similar voltage. And the last thing, you always want to be in the same room when batteries are actively charging, just to be safe, you know, to have time to react if something bad starts to happen, cover them with something, take them out where the fire doesn't pose a threat and so on. So yeah, don't leave the batteries alone. And yeah, this is it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, comment below and I will see you in the next tutorial.